Hi guys, this video is in two versions, a short version and a long version. The short version stays on the subject of the live love sensors, and the long version covers other subjects during my 15 mile bike ride. I'm going to talk about a couple of items that I got for my bike and you may or may not uh, be interested in this. It has to do with exercise and monitoring yourself while you're riding. This is a Live Love cadence sensor. And it's got a little rubber band right here that you attach this to the crank on your bicycle. And when you turn it on, it will sense the revolutions, which will give you your cadence. And the other item I have, this is a Live Love heart monitor and it keeps up with your heart rate so it's a heart rate monitor you can put this on a couple of ways first you can put it on right here if you want to just tighten up the strap it's got a velcro you can put it on right there it's got a little it actually is not a button it's actually a surface you depress it down and you wait about two seconds and your light will start flashing and that shows that it's on and when you want to cut it off, you depress it again, and it'll show a red light, and it gives a little bleep, and red and that's off. You can either put it in this position, or you can put it up higher. Into this position. Right here. So there are two positions that this will work in, and it works fairly well. I did notice that it's a little bit of delay. Oh, it can be up to maybe even five seconds delay. I'm using an app, the Wahoo app, and it will recognize these devices. And what you do is you just go into the Wahoo app itself. Okay, let me show you how you set this up and how you sync in your sensors to Wahoo. First you download Wahoo. Once it's downloaded and this screen comes up, go ahead and hit your settings and then you'll see sensor up here. You hit sensors. Alright, that's got add a new sensor. Okay, I'm going to add the, the cadence first. So I hit the add sensor, quick parry. And if you notice when I pick this up, watch the blue light. I'll move this around. Okay, it picked up this the uh, cadence. Now this can be for speed. This actually, actually, this one has cadence written on it. So uh, we go ahead and we hit that, and we go in here, and you can rename that to whatever you want to. And I'll go ahead and I hit save sensor. Okay, so I've got that sensor. I go back, go back. So that one is is connected. And so the next sensor I want to do is my heart rate. So I have to cut it on. Now, this has a solid face because it's, it's you know, somewhat waterproof. And so I will mash down here for two seconds. Okay, and you see the purple light come on. That's showing that this is working. All right, see it picked up that sensor because it's right here. Heart rate, and I hit it. And I go ahead and I hit Save Sensor, Continue, okay, and now I'll go back, and I've got my two sensors hooked up. And now I'll go back, and now I hit Workout, that's my workout screen, and now I hit Enter Workout. <clears throat> It's got my cadence, my heart rate, and this has my speed. So to get those activated, you just rotate the cadence. I don't know if you picked up on the blue light coming on. And in a second, you'll see it start putting out a reading. Okay, so it's reading the cadence now. Picks it up a little bit quicker on the bike. And now on your this, I, on the heart rate, I have to put it on. So I slide it on, I put it down here, just so it can pick up a reading. And as soon as it starts picking up a reading, it's already started. 
So see, it's picking up my heart rate right now. And down here is your work. You can hit when you hit start, it'll start the clock running on your workout time, and this will give you your distance over here. And of course, that's your uh, speed. And I'm not hooked to any GPS since I'm in here at the house, so that uh, that doesn't show anything. And my cadence has stopped, so that's blanked out. But you've got more screens in here that gives you more detail information: lap time, heart rate, speed, lap distance, and and it breaks those down. And then you've got another one over here on your heart rate. It gives you your, your average and your maximum heart rate. And, you know, the time that you work out. And the calories you burn based on your weight. You have to put this information, when you first get this app, it'll ask you, you know, how much do you weigh, how tall are you, and things like that. So it can get uh, an idea of how many calories you're burning based on your heart rate. And on this one, it gives you elevations, grade, climb, temperature. So there are your settings. I normally run mine right here. That way I can monitor. See everything larger monitor. It's real easy to go back to this. And if you get off your bike and you, you, you want to stop it, you just hit pause and it pauses. And if you want to uh, start it back, you just hit resume. And that's all it is to it. If you want to go back to your other screen, you hit this little arrow right here. It takes you back to your other screen. And you just rotate that now. It will not rotate back this way because you're on your map. So you have to hit that little blue arrow to get it to go back. And w once you have completed your workout, you just hit the pause. And then that will bring you here and you hit stop. And when you do that, and you can either you can save all that information. It will come up. You can give it a name. I'll also go ahead and hit save. And when I do that, <clears throat> it goes in and you can give it a name. All that information will be stored. And this actual information will be transferred over to Relive. A lot of y'all are familiar with that app. So uh, that'll give you a, this information will automatically go over to Relive because I've got that connected into this app, the Wahoo app. It gives you it's a number of different programs that you can sync the two apps together. And so this one is synced with Relive. So I know a lot of y'all use that. Let me take this off, off, and where you shut it down, you hold this until you feel it vibrate. Vibrated, and you see those red blinking lights that shows you that that's all. You have to turn this on and off, so that's something that you've got to do. Because if you don't turn it off, it'll continue to run, so you want to turn it off. I don't know whether it's got a... Uh, a timer in it after so many minutes it'll shut itself off or not. I haven't had it long enough really to get in it that deeply. It may have a timer in it that if no activity for so many minutes it'll shut itself off. Now this shuts itself off uh, I don't know how many minutes it takes of non non use not being used but it shuts itself down and as soon as it starts rotating it reactivates itself so you don't have to worry about this one. And It has a little it has a several gives you several, well you call it a rubber band or looks really like a seal, a ring seal. But uh, to give you this little pad, and you put this on the back side of your crank and you take this and wrap it around your crank and it will hold it in place. And once you've done that, take your crank and slowly rotate it to make sure this doesn't hit anything. Because a lot of cranks can be close to different things on your bike. To do it, want do it a rotation to see that it's not going to hit on anything. So that's how you sink it in and use it. Real simple, very simple. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow. Okay, another hot and humid day in North Carolina. Got my cadence band on. Push it and start it. Got two seconds. My light's blinking, a little purple light, so I'm set up with it. Now I kept, check my battery level. Got my auxiliary battery on. Got my main battery on. 54.6. I actually uh, charged it up. I didn't get a chance to go out yesterday to ride, so it's been two days since it was charged. I don't like to do that, but, you know, sometimes you can't. Go out to ride when you want to. Uh, 
Okay, let me cut on my sound. Okay, looks like it's picking up my sound. I'll go back to turn on this GPS. Okay, I'll turn on and turn on my cool mix. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you now how to install the cadence sensor. It's real simple. What you want to make sure is when you put put it put it on that you don't that you're not gonna hit anything. So you run it through. Like for example, I've got this little pad here that was getting mighty close to interfering with it. So I, I put a, a, another little tie strap on it to keep it from from slipping that way anymore. So that gave me the proper clearance. That was the only thing that I had to worry about. And this is how you put it on. It's got the little O-ring seal band. Doesn't make any difference whether you put it upright. Doesn't make any difference up or down. All you gotta do is put that on. It's got a little pad here, a little rubber pad. Make sure you put that on. That sits, pad sits against the uh, crank itself. that side and then loop the other side okay and that's in place and you can adjust it ever how you want to whether it's up or down uh, I'm gonna put mine down a little bit more that's all it is and uh, now when you pedal it will uh, sense that it's revolving and, it, and that's what gives you a cadence Gotta get everything in sync here. Turn my Wahoo on. Wahoo app is coming up. And I hit enter workout. Give it a few times and it should kick that in. Gotta pick up satellites. So, with that being said, I think I'm ready to ride. Let me turn my lights on. Got four beacons that I use. Got my front beacons and my rear beacons. Okay. So I'm up and flashing. Okay, I'll put it on current and now I'm going to go up to mode three. I'll put it in the six o'clock position. This is where I like to take off and ease down on the throttle. And I'm on my way. Okay, and the cadence has kicked in. Let me check on something right here to make sure my dash cam's working. Yep. It seems to be working. Okay, since I've got a fully charged battery, my uh, performance is, is up. My PAS mode three, as you can see, I'm doing 17.6, which this is a good pedaling range for me. Put it in fifth gear. This is where I usually ride at this speed. That should get my cadence up to around 80. That one ran right through that stop sign. That just goes to show you people, you need to watch it. She didn't even begin to stop. Four way stop and she just blew right through it. That's how accidents happen. Morning. Did that bill to give me a, a sound track so I can track my sound when I try to sync these things together, my, my videos. Okay, so I've got my cadence up, you know, pretty close to where I like to ride, about 80. Heart rate to 106. 
Now, when I'm at the gym, I ride my stationary bike at level about five or six is normally the level that I ride in. I know that's subjective, depending on what type of equipment you have, but it gives me a fairly decent cardiovascular workout at the gym. And my heart rate there runs anywhere from about 102 to 104. So as you can see, I'm already pumping up my heart at a faster rate than I am at the gym. That's just another thing that you can point out to these people that think that you're not getting any exercise. You get, you're getting cardiovascular exercise. Moving these legs by themselves does that. Well, it's in the mid-80s here in North Carolina right now. It's 1140. And the humidity is pretty hot, pretty high. It's been a couple of days since I've been out, and the last time I was out, it was in the 90s with high humidity, so the adjusted temperature was up around 100, so not quite as warm today. As you see, it went down a hill, so I went up to a higher gear. Now, drop it back down. And there's, like I was saying, there's a little lag between the uh, two sensors in the Wahoo app. It may be as much as a five second delay, which doesn't really matter that much because you're not really looking at an instantaneous reading in any of those. You, just, you want to know at some point, you know, what that reading was, but it doesn't have to be immediate. Your GPS is are going to move around. They're really not as, they're not as stable as the speedometer on the, the XP. Even though I know the speedometer on the XP is just a little, little slow, I don't think it's much over about two tenths of a mile per hour off. But it's consistent because it works, it works off the, uh, the, the motor knows how fast the, the rear wheel is spinning and it, it knows by doing that and the size of the wheel and everything, it knows what speed you're doing. And it does it on a, it's a more du direct exchange of data. So the data doesn't have to go to a satellite and back like a GPS. And remember GPS is, uh, they're not 100% accurate as far as when they give you a reading, they can be a few feet off. The GPS's can be a few feet off, and consequently, uh, when you're traveling at a, at a slow speed like this, uh, a few feet off can make a big difference in your speed uh, as far as what it's, it's reading out. That's one reason that it jumps all around, especially on a cloudy day, because uh, it, it, it will, signals will pop in and out from you, your satellites. The GPS speed works off of two readings your last reading and your present reading. So if uh, either one of those or both of those are off a little bit, it can throw that speed off. And consequently, the next time it does a, a reading, which I don't know wh what these apps, how many times they take a GPS reading. It might take one a second, one every three seconds. I, I, I'm not sure. But that delay period it is another reason that you get rather erratic speed up reading sometimes. In other words, it won't be stable. Uh, open road here, I'm gonna go up to PS4, shift up six and seven. Uh, slight upgrade, drop back a gear. Now I'll go back up a gear. Okay, once I get through this intersection, I'm going to drop back to three, and I'm going to use my throttle, and I'll kick it in cruise control, and now I'll pedal with the cruise control wide open. And as you see, I've got, like I say, with a uh, uh, fully charged battery, you get a pretty decent speed out of the cruise control. It's up around 22 miles per hour. Back into cruise control. Get up to sixth gear. 
Now this is what I was talking about in my previous, one of my previous videos. If I want to, see my cadence is pretty high. Let me go up to seven and see what it's doing. Okay, see seven is a little low and six is a little high as far as my cadence. So what I can do to adjust for that is I'll take my throttle and I won't go quite to full throttle and I'll kick in cruise control. Okay, that's dropped me back a few. That's dropped me back a little bit in my speed, not much. Let me try that again and see if I can get it down a little bit more. So put it right there and line up my markers. And this is not an exact science because the voltage level on your battery dictates those small differences in speed. Okay, so see, that's, that's pretty close. I'm pretty close to my 80. I'm going uphill a little bit, so as soon as I get to the crest of the hill, it'll, I'll probably be a little over 80. So this is a good comfortable pace for me right here. I feel like I'm spinning fast enough, and I'm also getting enough resistance off the pedals that I'm getting some benefit off of that too. I'm getting a little bit of muscle and a little bit of cardiovascular. Probably more cardiovascular than, than muscle, but 74 years old. You're not as young as you used to be. Getting ready to make my turn. This is my daily route that I'm taking. I do this every day. It's a 15 mile route, thereabouts, plus or minus. Okay, I'll line up those markers again. Hit that cruise control. And there we go. I'll be on this road. I'll do a, a little out and back on this road for about the next three miles. And traffic can be a little, a little moderate on this road. It's never really what I call heavy traffic, but it can get a little moderate on Friday afternoons and around school openings and closures, closures and things like that. But for the most part, it's it's a great little road. It's flat. This is where I do all my take all my data because it is so flat, relatively straight. So I don't have turns that really affect my data. This section I'm in right now is pretty flat. It's got about a half a mile of flatness right along in here. And don't have my wind gauge on today. There's a little breeze out here. You can look at the flags and tell that I'm in a little bit of a headwind. So my heart rate is pumping up above 120, so getting a little bit of exercise. You've got a couple of things that happen when you're riding out on a road or street or whatever on a bike or e-bike that you don't have on a stationary bike. And those two are balance and awareness. Both of those will require you to think and it requires your brain to be a little more active than if you're on a stationary. So consequently, your brain's more active, it's burning more calories, and your heart rate's going to go up a little bit. So those two factors play in there a little bit as far as increasing your heart rate out on the road as opposed to a stationary bike. I think I might change my route a little bit today. Break the monotony. I do this route today. I've got an alternative route up here that I'll take. It puts me on a back road oh, for a couple of miles, and traffic is, normally is not heavy at all on that little back road. It's no shoulder, which uh, I don't like, but still again, when you don't have much traffic, good chance you won't have any problems. So I think I'll do that. I'll take a right, right up here on this back road. And this back road kind of does a, kind of a, a U-turn. I'll be going, coming back, and I'll end up cross, uh, crossing over the intersection I went through about two miles back. Okay, no traffic behind me. Here's my turn. Car coming. So I don't want to go over the line. Okay. Now I'm on this back road. Now I'm going to have to reset my cruise. Reset it. Got my cadence back up in a good ring. Yep, there's no, uh, no shoulder on this road to go over the white line on. So when I travel these roads like this, I used to do a lot of cross-country cycling. And I put, I put as much as 5,600 miles one year on my trek. So I did a lot of open road, city, and I found out that you've got to kind of claim the road. But when you do that, you need to have, be constantly looking at your rearview mirror because you've got to know what the guy behind you is, is doing. So when I see a car come up behind me, I will normally try to size that vehicle up before he ever gets to me. If he starts going over the line to go around me, 
I know that, you know, there's, gonna be a, there's not going to be any conflict there. But I'll see these people, and they're not moving. And they're coming up behind me, and they're not moving. They're not moving. I say, uh -huh, I've got a problem. So what I do is, and this is perfectly legal in North Carolina, I'll move to the center of the lane like I am now, and it forces them to go over that line. It's like that line to some people is a, is a brick wall, and they just can't go over it. So that makes them go over it. Now, I pissed off some drivers doing that, but it's all legal, and they need to learn to, the rules and uh, share the road with cyclists. And the same thing with cyclists. They need to be courteous and obey the laws. Now, you normally do a California stop because when you're going on a bike, you're traveling pretty slow. And you have plenty of time without dismounting to look both ways and make sure there's no traffic. And if there's a case where I can't see my traffic clearly, then yes, I'll stop even though no traffic's coming. But a lot of states have laws now that allow cyclists to do that. I'm not sure what the term is, but I'll say it allows cyclists to do a yield right away stop, meaning if it's clear, they don't have to come to a complete stop. If it's not clear, then they have to stop. So uh, that's basically what I do. And of course, all traffic lights, I'll sit there and wait until, the, until it changes. A lot of traffic lights around this area are trip lights. And I pretty much know the ones that a bike, you have to get your bike and line it up with one of your grooves that was cut for the wiring for the trip, line up your tire with it, and probably 50 to 60 percent will, will, the traffic lights will change green for you. But there are some that won't, and I know which ones are they. Now, if that's, I'm at an intersection like that, I'll stop, I'll come to a complete stop, I'll look, make sure that I'm clear just like a, I would do at a stop, stop sign. And if I'm clear and there's no traffic coming and there's not a car coming up from either direction to trip that light for me, I'm going to go ahead and go through that intersection because I've stopped and I've seen that it's clear. And uh, I'm not really sure what the law would say to that, but I don't think a bike would be obligated to stay at a stoplight for an hour waiting for it to change by another driver if he was at a very, you know, at an intersection that had very little traffic. That would, I don't think that law was really written that way. So if your bike won't trip that light, then just go ahead and stop, wait till the traffic's clear and go through it. So it looks like I'm holding at about 124 on my heartbeat and right at 80, so this is where I'm comfortable. And at the end of the ride, I'll show you the uh, rest of this. Well, I could actually go to it right now. And uh, you've got different things that it's keeping up with. I can't, can't read it now, I don't have my glasses on. Maybe when I get back, to edit this video, I can uh, tell you what each one of these are. The writing is a little bit small. Going down a hill. And now I'm back. Screen light. It also has a uh, another screen that shows you where you are, a map. Oh, sh and I forgot to hit start. Let me hit start. I knew it was going to be something that I would forget to do. And I forgot to hit start back there when I started off, so I've gone 12 miles already without hitting start. So I've got other means that, that we can go by on distance and everything. Oh well, I knew it was gonna be something. I had a lot to do this morning. I had to hook that cadence up. I had to hook my camera up. I had to put my heart rate band on. I had to did a little quick video of me installing that cadence. I had to recharge some batteries. They run low. I had to set my phone up to do the uh, audio and this is an experiment with audio. I've never tried it. I've got my Pixel remote mic hooked up, and so I've never tried it out on the road like this. I'm hoping that you can hear me. Yeah, coming up to my intersection. Now, if you remember way back, that last, traf uh, last intersection I went through with a traffic light, we're going back toward it. It's about a mile up the road. Now, I'm not going that far. I'm gonna go up here about uh, three-eighths of a mile, and I'm taking a left. I'm going to bump my speed up a little bit. I'm going to go to five. Go ahead and go to my high gear and get off this road. This is a, can be a fur, uh, heavily traveled road. And since it's so narrow, no shoulder. I just don't like to be on it. Okay, here goes my turn. Okay, now this road doesn't have any shoulder either, but it's normally not that much of a problem. Kick my cruise back in. Now I'm going to drop my PES down to three. And let's see where we are. Okay, now I'm going to 
go back to my other screen. There we go. I'm going to bump up my speed a little bit. So I'll go back here and get it right along in here. Okay. Up my speed a little bit. That's what I like about this cruise control. You can uh, set the bike at your desired level, and mine will be based on my cadence. Got a little, I think I might have a derailleur that's a little bit out of, out of sync there. Hear what sounds like a little bit of cross chaining in it that I have to do until I can get back and adjust it. I've just started using the Wahoo app. I was using several other apps, and this cool nick down here with the black screen is the one that I've been using. That's my favorite because it's got so many readings that you can change to. But when I got the heart sensor and the cadence sensor, it does not have, the app will not sync in with, the, with any of those sensors. So it doesn't have that feature. So that's when I went through and I go through YouTube and look at a lot of videos. There's not too many on that live love, not many videos on it. Matter of fact, this one is on it. So, but what I could tell, it's a, it's a good app. Okay. Now I was at this intersection about, I don't know, maybe four miles back, three miles back. I was at this intersection. I was coming through going to my right. Now I'm crossing it. I hope I don't have a blowout on my rear tire. Pushing that rear tire about as far as I feel comfortable pushing one. I've got over 4,000 miles on it. And the rear tire is showing wear. It's a lot of the tread have worn completely off. But it's not down to the to the fabric yet. So probably lost a little bit of its puncture resistance, but other than that, it'll probably hold up. I've got I'm running 25 pounds of air in my rear. I run 15 in my front. I've done some tests on it and that's where I get my best tire wear. I know a lot of people look for comfort in a different style of ridings and adjust their tire pressure accordingly. Nothing wrong with that as long as you realize that if you've got your tires improperly inflated, you're going to get uneven wear on your tires. It's just like a car. If you don't have the surface pad with that weight distributed evenly across it, say you've got not enough air in your tire, then your shoulders of your tire on that uh, surface pad are going to start wearing on your tire before the center does. And vice versa, when the uh, have too much air in your tire, then the center of the tire is going to wear faster than the shoulders, shoulders of the tire or, or, the, or the outside edges of the tire. So that's something to consider whenever you're putting air in your tires. My weight with gear and everything, and I've done it, uh, I've measured all this stuff. I've got two thirds of the weight, of the weight in this bike goes to the rear tire. I've got over 200 pounds of weight on that rear tire, and I have 80-some uh, on the front tire. So that's, that's a lot of difference. And it shows. The front tire shows very little wear. I dare say I can maybe get another 4,000 out of the front tire. That just remains to be seen. A lot of people say, well, why don't you rotate your tires? Could do that if I knew exactly when I needed to do it. I don't want to be rotating my tires every month because that ain't fun taking them off the rim and putting them back on another one, getting everything back working right. Life's too short. So my advice to anybody that's going to change out, I've got the, let me get it up a little bit because I've got traffic behind me. Okay. I'm off that stretch. I've got Kendall Craze tires on this bike. They are a road tire. They kind of look like a small motorcycle tire. They have a relatively a slick or flat groove pattern on them. But for those that are getting back to rotating tires, I, before I would rotate my tires, I just go ahead like in this case, I know about what my wear is on them, my range and what whatever. So what I would do is buy three tires instead of two. And once I've worn the rear tire down to where I didn't feel comfortable, I'd change it. And you've still got plenty of miles left on the front. So we're probably talking about a total of maybe uh, uh, somewhere between six and 8,000 miles. You're not changing your tires, but three times, as opposed to sitting there rotating when you think you need to. 
at the minimum, you'd rotate them once, and that would probably be uh, in less than six miles. Okay, just tooling along. Yeah, I hate that I didn't have the full course. It's not going to show up on my Wahoo, but that's that's the way it happens sometimes. Right now, I've gone 12.3 uh, miles, according to Cool Nick. I see posted a lot, people are asking, well, what gear should I have it in in relationship to my PAS modes? Well, that question is so subjective. It's about like going up to somebody and asking them how much does a suit of clothes cost? You know, <laughs> there's a lot of verbals there. And what I normally say is your gears have nothing to do with your PAS modes. Just don't even think of them in the same terms. Even though I do, when I'm on a flat surface, I kind of know what gear I want it in, depending on my PAS mode. But the main thing is, is my cadence. I try to keep my cadence at 80 or thereabouts. And uh, if I can't keep it there, so the speed is what dictates it. And so if you've got a headwind, that's going to reduce your speed in, in whatever PAS mode you're in. And consequently, your cadence is going to be lower, so your gear is going to need to be uh, lower to compensate for that so you can get your cadence up higher. Now, I don't know how most people brake, but I've been riding so long on a bike, it's, it's kind of like driving a car. I don't even think about what I'm doing anymore when I do a lot of things on a bike. And one of them is braking. I normally apply my rear brake to, to, to slow me down. Like, for example, here, I apply that rear, and then I use the front brake to complement my braking so that, that I won't have to really put a lot of pressure on the rear one. The thing I like about this 360 camera, I've got, I've got an Insta 360-1X, uh, and I've got a newer version out, but I'm going to wait until the next version comes out because I don't think it's that much of a jump between the one that I've got and the X2, I think is what they call it, because they really haven't changed the resolution that much, and it's, de it's deceiving on a 360 camera, because when you have a, a close to 6K resolution on a 360, that ain't the same as a regular camera, because the 360, you're taking pictures in front of you, to either side, behind you, below you, and above you. So you you think of a cube with six sides, so you're taking basically six pictures, and it's, you know, meshing it all into one. So 6K at its best is going to, which this isn't quite 6K, but even at 6K, when you, when you realize that and you try to put it into a, a standard high definition 1080, 1080 then uh, it's really about 1K, which is you know, not that much. So they're not that clear. They've got they got real good close-up clarity, but when it starts getting in the distance, it it does get a little fuzzy. But you know, I'm not doing it for cinematography. I'm doing it for information and YouTube blobs. So it's not that critical. Okay, this is one of those intersections you have to stop completely if you want to live anyway. Okay, and I do something I don't do very often. I just sit here and coast. We're going on a down, slight downhill, and I just coast through here a little bit. It's shady, so normally it's cool. Normally it's cooler than it is now. It's around lunchtime, and the sun is directly overhead. Most of the time it's shady, real shady in this area. Real cool, low land down by a creek. Well, as you can see, my speed has dropped off. It was 17.2, uh, 17.4, somewhere along in there. And then we're below 17, so in 12, uh, 14, 14 and a half miles, we've lost a lot of top end in our PAS-3. Okay, we're going to be a little over 15 when I get to the house. I may break this uh, video up into two parts, break it up into a short version and a long version, because I've been out now riding for... Even even after I cut it and condense it and everything, it st still makes for a long video if I try to cap get everything in, which I wouldn't do anyway, but still, to stay with the subject, 
I have a short version because a lot of people don't like long versions. And then some people like me, they just get, get in kind of a, a trance watching the people ride these things. If I don't have anything to do, I'll sit back and, and watch it. Watch rides that really don't have much content. You know, traffic's not quite as bad on Saturday as it is on a weekday. And then Sundays is, is my best day. I go out and ride Sunday morning, and I, I, it's a lot less traffic except for that church church traffic. Other than that, it's pretty light, and that usually comes in spurts. Okay, and I'm back home again, and I'll get under here in the shade and just kind of go a couple of little things before I close this thing out. First of all, my Wahoo is not going to show my route completely because I didn't cut it on when I started out. Now I'll pause it, and now I'll stop it. Now I got and I have to go with my, my cool neck down here. We went 15.19 uh, miles. That's got more data to it too. Let's go to home. And that gives you the information for that route. Like I went an average speed of 17.8. Maximum was 28.9. And my distance was the 15, whatever. And uh, that gives the odometer for the last time that I, re that I reset this thing. thing. Doesn't mean anything. Now, in here, I've got the route that I took and everything up there. And I want to, I want to make sure that this information is saved. That was my route where I picked it up. Now, see, I started out. Where are we? I started out here, so see, that would have been the route. But anyway, that's a partial of the route. Okay, not only do you have a road map, you also got a satellite view if you want it. You can blow it up and see different things. So it's, you know, it's a Google Maps, what it is. And now it's set up for the next one. I can go to history. And on the history, it gives you information about your workout this, okay, times this week. So that's different times that I use this app. And I just started using it. I'm still getting used to this app, so I'm not sure. I was trying to bring up the information on it. I know it's a way to get to it, but as I say, I don't have my glasses on, and it's hard for me to read these, this little text. Okay, it just goes back to that one that shows the information. Edit workout, maximum speed. See, this one says 28. Of course, this information was just taken at the time that, I think at the time that I hit start. So it doesn't have the total information for this route. And I can edit by giving it a name and things like that. So that gives you some idea. Let's see what my voltage level is. OK, I did that 15, over 15 miles. And I've still got over 75% of my battery life left. So that, that was less than 25% using these two batteries. So I can easily, you know, I could push it and probably go 60 miles before the battery would be completely depleted, but I don't, I usually always recharge at about 25% level. So that gives me three days of riding on my regular route. Okay, that kind of winds up this portion. Appreciate y'all watching this. Hope y'all enjoyed it. Until next time, y'all have a nice day.